today we are playing our brand new Catan that we got for Christmas. Dad got it for Christmas. And it is one of the Legacy Catan games. And this one is called Legend of the Conquerors. So this is chapter one, it's called Resist. And to play this, you will need the Cities and Knights expansion, as well as your base Catan game. And you will need to have played Cities and Knights a few times. So we're really excited about this one. We actually just opened it up. Uh, this is what comes with chapter one. So these, cameraman, I'll get you to zoom in as I point here. These are the conquerors. So you have to put these stickers on. And so they're light colored on one side and dark colored on the other. And they're numbered two, three, four, five, and six. So those are conquerors and that is their strength. There are these blue progress cards. They actually replace the blue ones that come with Cities and Knights originally. Take those out. The blue progress cards go here. These are marker tokens. So there's two for each color of player. One keeps track of your score and the score is kept track on this side here. You can see that. So the other marker token is used over here for the hero numbers. I'll get into that later, but that's where your two markers go. We're going to touch base on these things after. These are conquer starting places. These are your starting settlement locations. And these are your starting road locations. And again, I'll, we'll show you more of those on the map. Each player gets chapter cards. They just explain things in the chapter. How it ends and the symbols that are on here. Just quick reference. It also comes with new hexes. Most of them are resources, but there are nine. I don't know what you would call that. It's not a desert. It's, it's a barren land. It is a like barren sand. land. Ooh. Blah. I don't know. Yeah. Gross. There are no harbors, but there's land harbors. That's these things here. So this is how you trade two to one. They're just not on the ocean. They're over on the edge of the land. Kind of cool. Board extenders. You will need, let me pull these ones here. You will need four of the basic Catan game edges, but only four of them. Put that over here. You'll need all your cities, your roads, your settlements. I have them over here. You'll also need your knights and your city walls. Over here, it comes with numbers, all the numbers that you'll need. And you could, you could use any, but on the flip side of the numbers, there's flags. And that's to represent that that hex has been defeated or conquered so you don't have to use these ones just flip it over so that the number's not showing I guess on the other ones this represents the direction that the conquerors move when they move inland we'll get more into that later and this here is the giant barbarian tracker card it's quite big actually and that takes the place of this. Really tiny, right? Okay. In this one, you will not need development cards or a metropolis. So those can stay out of the game. You will, however, need your barbarian 
He goes on the Barbarian Tracker. All three die. Oh, I forgot this little die here. This is the die with the color swords that represent the movement, the direction that the conquerors move in. So that kind of goes with this hex here. Don't forget your merchant. And of course, all of your commodity cards. And the rest of the progress cards. So I showed you that blue has new progress cards. You'll just use the green and the yellow that came with the original game. There aren't new ones of those. And then these are just your victory points. Okay. There is no largest army, but we will be using Longest Road and Harbor Master. No, we will not be using Harbor Master. There are no harbors. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one too. I just realized that. So no Harbor Master, only Longest Road. And the last thing, don't forget, is the flip charts. Okay. Now, there are no metropolises. Scissors? How do you say metropolis? Metropoli. Metropoli? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Because there's none of those, these only, the highest you can go is three. Okay? So where you get that bonus, that's only as high as you can flip it. Okay, you can't upgrade anymore. All right. And I think, oh, there is no robber. If you roll a seven, there's no robber. There's also no stealing. The only thing that happens if you roll a seven is that if you have more than seven cards in your hand, you have to discard up to half. The base trade is three to one. And that's it for now. So we're going to go ahead and set up the board, get everything ready to go. And then when we come back, I'll kind of explain. I don't know what I'll explain first, kind of where everything is. And then we'll go through a couple turns and we'll see how this goes. Let's set up the board. Okay, so we got the board set up. Each player, we'll get you to zoom in here, cameraman, gets an end of chapter card. So there are three ways that this chapter ends. It'll end in defeat. That means that there are seven conquerors on the board. These, the number that is on here is their strength. So six and three is nine. That doesn't count as seven conquerors. It's actually seven of the shapes, okay? So seven conquerors means we are defeated. A victory is when the barbarian ship, I'll get dad to show you that big board there. We might have to move it on a little bit. I don't know if, we'll just leave it like that. I guess we'll see if cameraman can fix it up. Um, if the barbarian gets to the very end, the last circle, we win. Okay? So that's a good thing. We want him to get to the very end. An early victory. If somebody here reaches 13 victory points, they win us the game. Game over. Okay? So those are the three ways that the chapter can end. The other card each player will get is an identity card and it explains what each symbol on that barbarian track does. We, what we're going to do is we will stop. We're going to kind of speed up play in the beginning because it's going to be just like regular cities and nights. When the barbarian ship gets to the first marked space, We'll stop it and we'll slow it down for a bit so that we can show you how to move conquerors and what all the symbols mean. Okay? If 
you roll a seven like that and it's a barbarian ship the barbarian ship does not move a seven is punishment enough okay and the castles everything else is exactly the same as cities and knights and let's get into oh, that mouse one of them's having fun. Yeah. Yes, that mouse is a lot of fun. Okay, so let's get into the initial placement. Let's see who's going to place first. You guys roll. Dad got two, kids got three, mom got five. So mom's gonna place first. And initial placement goes like this. These three spaces are where the first settlement has to go. So I will have to place in one of those three locations. So the order is, I'm just going to lay it out here. Uh, where's a good place where we got lots of water? We'll go right down here. So I'm going to place a settlement followed by dad. Followed by the kids. And from there, you will have to place the road on the road marker. Okay? So it's kind of, with Dad, you can give me a road, roads. Okay. As well on that, at the end of the road here, at that intersection, if I placed here, you'll place a knight. A single knight. Like that. So everybody give me a knight. So that is actually the, your first placement. Is a settlement, a road, and a knight. Okay, so after that, Red will get to place their second settlement. Followed by dad. And mom. Okay. Followed by, and we'll put our roads in there as well. This one gets a little bit, that's not a road. It's a little bit more complicated here. Okay. So settlement with Nate. Followed by settlement, followed by city, wall, and city. <clears throat> We're going to have to kind of go this way on our... There. Plus, of course, your road. Get your roads in there. Okay. So, a lot of placement. You're going to be starting with four victory points. Ryder, can you point that out there where everybody's... Oh, yeah, thank you, Dad. Okay, so one for each settlement, two for your city. This is the order. Remember, your very first settlement needs to be placed on one of the symbols. After that, it's up to you. All right, we're going to place... We're going to start because for the first, how many times there? One, two, three, four, five. For the first five times the barbarian comes, nothing's going to happen. There's no symbols on those circles. Nothing's going to happen. Okay? So for the first five times, we're just going to speed that up. We'll stop it when we get to the first symbol. We'll see you soon. All right. Eight with a barbarian. So we're going to move. But we're going to hold off on that right now. We're going to actually collect. I know in the game it says, do your thing. and then, Let's just collect. So it was an eight. And I'm not even collecting. All right. That was mom's roll. So the first symbol that you're going to hit is a flag with a number two on it. Okay. Now, that means that 
you place a conqueror with a strength of that number on each hex with the landing marker. So that's your first step. So you're going to go one, two, So now that that is, they're all placed there, that's it, okay? That's all that the flags do. When you get to flag number three, you'll place conquerors that have a three on them on the three landing spaces. Remember, we're playing a three-player game. Before we get there, I'll kind of explain the way they move is when you get to the swords. Um, on, if daddy can point there, the swords on there, that's when they actually start moving. Okay? So again, we're going to keep playing here. It's my turn. I can't do anything anyway. So I'm going to pass the dice. Because the next barbarian spot is another logo. Six. Six, and it's a green castle, so the barbarian doesn't move anyway. So collect for your sixes. Dad, are you doing anything on your turn? Um, yeah, I'd like to do that. Lower Let's do that. Pink wagon. Okay. So the kids are going to go. They rolled a six and a barbarian. So the barbarian will move again. Before you to do anything, though, before you build anything, let's deal with the barbarian. So the barbarian moved, and now the logo is what, Ryder? Um, is a axe. An axe. So what the axe logo does, it's a normal barbarian attack just like in the cities and knights game so you add up your cities we have one two three four and then we add up the knights that we have activated how many is that you guys two three four five six seven eight nine whoa we kicked the barbarians out of the water he got a victory point dad gets the victory point all right so that's what the axe does it's just a normal barbarian attack. Everybody is deactivated. Everybody is deactivated here. Did we get everybody? Yeah. Okay. Are you guys doing, are the kids doing anything on their turn? Yes, we are. Oh, what are you doing? Building a knight. Nope. Sometimes we don't agree when we're on the kids' team. Build a knight? Nope. Build a road? Nope. Build three roads. Gets longest road. Oh. But, else, but if we build a knight, we can do two. Good. Oh. Is your turn over? Oh, and activate it. <laughs> it was off camera, but they gave each other a thumbs up. They like to play together sometimes. All right. Eleven and a barbarian. So we'll collect and then I'll talk about that one. So it's an 11. No, mm -hmm. collect. Okay, so we just moved the barbarian and this time the logo is the little sword. Red sword. Red sword. So that means the conquerors that we have on the landing spaces are attacking. Now, it is a red sword I'm trying to get my words straight here so that means you're going to start i'm kind of looking at the board i'm on this side so if it's a red sword you start moving the conqueror here if it's a green sword you would start by moving the one nearest to me so we'll call that north this south okay but we are going to start up here. Now, to make it random as they move, you roll this die. 
Hey kids, do you want to? So we're going to roll for this one first. And what color is it? Yellow. Yellow. So you can see right here on this hex, zoom in there, cameraman, that the yellow sword, and make sure that you always have this little hex exactly like that. It can't be like that. It needs to be like that. Okay, so we rolled a yellow for him, so he's going to move straight onto here. That's not good. He has now conquered this hex. This hex no longer produces, and you can no longer build on it or upgrade. So I cannot upgrade to a city. It is now conquered. The only way to unconquer it is to move the knights there. But remember, they have to be activated. Okay? All right. Conquerors can never move onto the frame, back into the ocean, on an already occupied hex, so they can't be together, or a landing hex. So that's these ones here. They cannot go there. If that happens, so again, this guy rolled a yellow. If that happens and he, this was maybe somewhere he couldn't go, you go clockwise here. So his next color would be green and he would have moved in the green direction instead of the yellow. Okay, and that is how a conqueror moves. There are no knights around this hex, so there is no battle. So we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, now let's roll the knight, the sword die for this guy. What color? Red. Red. So you can see here, he has to move in that direction. And? Red. Moves in this direction. This is now conquered, and there is a battle. Because the, it, the knight does not have to be activated to battle the conqueror. Okay. My knight is worth one strength. The conqueror is worth two. Therefore, I lose. If the conqueror wins, the knight is removed from the board. Okay, so I just lost my knight. If I would have had a three there, I would have won and the conqueror would have been removed from the board. If I would have had a two there, we would have been tied and nothing would be removed. It was not a winning battle. Otherwise, Dad, can you point to the hero track down there, please? If it was a winning battle, any knights that were involved would have moved up. And those would have been extra victory points. And that's how they move. So we've moved them all. We have now two conquered knights. Remember, end of the chapter, we will be defeated if there are seven conquerors on the numbered hexes. So right now, we're already at two. We don't want to get any more than that. Okay. So we'll speed up a little bit, and then we'll stop it again when we start hitting the logo barbarian track circles. Okay, so Dad rolled a ten barbarian, so he's going to move the barbarian. And it is a three flag. So remember, the flag means you bring out the bar or the conquerors, I'm sorry, that have the threes on them. Okay. And it was a ten. Nope, they didn't move. So you don't roll the sword die. They just come out. So ten, ten, ten. Ooh, I actually get something. Are you guys collecting? Oh, Dad has a mitt full here. 
Can I start? Yep. Oh yeah, you can go. Oh yeah, kids rolled a barbarian and a five. So first we're gonna collect for our fives. I get nothing. And the barbarians are going to move. So dad's gonna move the barbarians and they've hit the sword and it's a green sword. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the bottom this time, at the south, okay? And you move from, you move the conquerors from left, south to north and left to right. So we're gonna have to roll this colored sword die a few times. Okay, go ahead, Lily. Green. Green moves here. We're gonna move this one next. Green. Green moves here. Another conquered number. Oh no. Green. Okay, so then we just we're going up this way. Green moves here. Green. Oh my goodness. Green moves here. Red. And a red. So this one goes up. And these guys were in the same yeah, row, so this guy moves first. Roll one more time. Red. Goes that way. Okay, so now if you take a look, there's only one on the board, the numbered hexes. So we lose if there's seven, but we only have one. Then you take a look. Do any of the conquerors, are they on hexes that have knights? Nope, 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 nope. Yep. What is the strength of that one? One, but he's not activated. Doesn't matter if they're activated okay. or not. So it's a strength of one versus a strength of two. So the knight would lose and red will take their knight off the board. Okay, so it was not a winning battle. They do not move up on the hero track. That is what happens. So remember these have the two different sides to help you remember which conquerors you have moved. When you move them, you just flip them over to the other side. So that's just to help uh, keep track of which ones you've moved. So the next time we move the conquerors, it's going to be a red sword. So we will start at the top and work our way down as well as west to east. Okay. And I don't think we're going to, it's pretty straightforward from here. I think we're going to speed up for the rest of the game. We'll let you know when it's over. We'll either be defeated, victorious, or get 13 victory points and end this game. And that's game. We were not defeated and we were not victorious. Dad ended the game with 13 victory points. So on the back of the instruction booklet, you can keep track of your legacies. So, um, you can only do this one time, right? So, it's up to you if you actually want to write on it. I think I'll just kind of make some notes here. But what you want to do is you want to write down, here's my piece of, oh, I'll rip this one out. So, our victory points, that's the first thing that you need to keep track of. Where'd my paper go here? Okay, so you want to write down victory points. So, Dad got 13. 13. Kids and Mom, I think we're tied, right? How many did we get? We had more than six. You guys, but I ended up stealing yeah. your longest road. So, so we both ended back. up with six. So the next thing you want to look at is the legendary points. The person with the most VPs, so dad, gets six legendary points. The second get three each. Okay. 
Then you look at the hero track. So dad's gonna point over there, the hero track. The player whose marker is in the most advanced position on the hero track gets two LPs, legacy points. So that's dad. And the players whose marker now occupies the second most gets one. So the kids get one. Kids only. So mom won't get that. And whoever is on the starter space, so that's mom, gets zero legacy points. Okay. So we'll keep track of that as we move on to chapter two. This is Legend of the Conquerors. Remember, you need to have cities and knights. I liked it, and it wasn't really too complicated. Mom gives it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Dad? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Kids? Oh, they like it too. Right on. We're all thumbs up. Okay, that's it. That's all. Keep playing, and have fun.